Hello everyone! Today I really want to get started on the insulation but before I do that and before I explain which kind of insulation I went for for this tiny van I need to lay the structure, the baton structure for the floor um, so those are the batons that I'm using they are five uh, centimeters wide and two centimeters thick This is the floor situation at the moment I was able to remove the bitumen layer that was driving me mad from the floor and I also um, removed any rust um, that I saw laying around and I primed it with a with a paint filler. For the baton structure I need to work around the engine uh, that's over there, the battery box and also this axis that I have for the methane bottles that obviously I needed to be accessible. I don't have a fixed beam, fixed metal beam like a normal car which is where you would usually screw in your buttons and then from there you would attach your cladding or wood or whatever you want. Um, I have removable flimsy beams, they are metal so my thinking is that I'm gonna try and bend some thin plywood and add it to this so then I have more surface for the cladding to, um, to get screwed in. The wooden buttons are all nice and cut. I might have put maybe too many, maybe I could have done without the those middle ones and those ones, but you know what? Better safe than sorry. And I did uh, run out of the nice wood, so I had to use some scraps that I had laying around. Uh, but now I'm just gonna give it a coat of uh, protective varnish, leave it to dry, and then tomorrow I'm gonna be ready to attach them to the floor. I did number them and uh, took a a few pictures of it, so hopefully I should be able to reconstruct the whole thing. As for varnish, I'm not really using anything in particular, I'm just using residues that I had laying around in the garage, a little bit of white, a little bit of chestnut, um, I don't really care because you're not going to see that as long as they are protected. Whilst the varnish dries, I am going to attempt and bend the wood to match the roof beams. So yesterday I already cut some strips of this, I think it's 6 mil plywood. And uh, to make it more bendable, because obviously if you try to bend it whilst it's dry, it's going to snap. Believe me, because I did uh, do just that yesterday. Um, I poured some boiling water on it and then covered it with a wet towel and I left it overnight. So hopefully now it should be a little bit more bendable. So the idea is that I'm going to attempt and match the curve of this, clamp it and let it dry and then hopefully that's gonna keep the, the, the bend and then glue two pieces together with some glue, wood glue this way I will have like uh, more thickness so that the screws can go in The experiment seems to have worked, I'm really pleased with the curve and now I'm gonna leave it under the sun for a few hours and then remove the clamps, uh, apply the glue, put the, glam the clamps again and then leave it uh, to dry overnight and then tomorrow I'm gonna trim the ends and then attach them with some uh, screws to the metal um, beam. But yeah, so happy with that. I need to wait for the varnish and the glue to dry until tomorrow I thought I would um, start applying the heat shield to the engine compartment um, the engine in the porter is right here right in the middle so the plan is I will be um, making a bench on top of it but there's a lot of heat that uh, comes out of the engine um, and that can be an issue in summer not so much in winter but in summer it gets boiling in here so I thought I would apply a few layers of this 10 millimeter heat shield this is both for thermal and also acoustic insulation which honestly I could do with all the acoustic insulation in this van it's so noisy um, so yeah I'm gonna be applying it and uh, hopefully it will make a difference but uh, I think we will see once the whole insulation is done
whilst working on the thing, I realized that it would be so much better to just take the piece out and take the measurements this way. Um, so I'm gonna put a second layer of the heat shield and try to do a little bit better than what I did so far because it's really, really bad. <laughs> Yesterday I went ahead and uh, fixed all the buttons to the floor using silicone. I didn't want to use any screws just because um, more holes means more possibilities of rust. So I just went ahead and used silicone for it. And then I already filled in the gaps with uh, some insulation. And this um, today I'll need to do the, the roof. But before I do that I want to talk a little bit about insulation because I think that's the most confusing and messy and debated topic on van conversions. So there's a lot of people that say one thing and then another thing and just don't know what to choose. And so I wanted to talk about my decision progress and the materials that I decided to use. Um, so for my first van conversion I actually used just camping mats and then I topped them up with uh, bubble uh, foil wrap on top and honestly it was fine I was very cheap and I didn't have any issues with rust or mold or anything like that or condensation it worked fine but I thought that for this um, camper run since I have the means I could do something a little bit better and top up my game so you might already know this but there's different options for insulations uh, one of the most used is uh, XPS or polystyrene extruded uh, foam boards and um, this is what I wanted to use for the floor and this is in fact what I'm using for the floor but I had such a hard time finding those because those are used in um, uh, insulation for houses and in Italy uh, lots of people are renovating their houses because there's a they are subsidized the renovation by the government anyway I couldn't get to find those foam boards anywhere so at the end I was able to grab a few but they were the wrong thickness they were like five centimeters thick and obviously you don't want to add five centimeters to the floor and to the roof in a, such a small van so I cut them down painfully and slowly cut them down with like a, a little saw and I was able to get them to the right thickness which is about two, two centimeters and a half the reason why I used those for the floor is that well they are cheap first of all and then they are sturdy so uh, it's not like in the roof where you need something that kind of bends uh, those for the, the floor work just fine and also I'm gonna be using them to uh, stuff the holes on the um, sides and uh, yeah my reasoning for this is just that they are cheap it has a good decent R value one thing that I will say is that the processing the manufacturing process of those things is not environmentally friendly and I found this afterwards I mean you could have probably figured out that it wasn't environmentally friendly but it's one of the things that is the most uh, polluting so if I was to do it again maybe I would think about something else but for now this is what I have this is what I'm gonna use for the roof instead, I did one for something more expensive, which is the 3M Tinselate. And um, this is both sound deadening and an insulating material. And uh, this is the only kind that I could find in Italy. It's not as thick as the one that I saw other people using in the US, but this is what um, I found. So this is what I'm gonna be using for the roof. As I said, this is much more expensive, but it's supposed to be a very good quality material to use for insulation. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna be doing with the roof. You can use other kinds of materials, of course, for uh, van insulation. There's people that use foam, but it's expensive. And also once you put it in, it's a nightmare to get it off and also I wouldn't want to breathe that in once I'm sleeping in the van so that was a no for me then there are people that use ship wool to insulate um, but I heard that can cause molding as well also people use denim but that also can retain moisture and cause molding which is not what you want there are foam boards that are a lot more expensive than XPS but those were just impossible to find in Italy in the UK you have Salotex which is a really good uh, foam board um, made for insulation so if you are in the UK you can uh, go towards that oh and finally this is what pretty much everybody uses and this is the thing that is the most debated and misused so I'm gonna make a disclaimer I am actually using this as a vapor barrier and not as a heat shield to use this as a heat barrier you need to leave a gap between the double-sided foil and the metal or whatever it's under 
this and I'm not gonna do that just because I don't have the space or the patience and I think that the insulation that I have is already good but I am gonna use this as a vapor barrier okay I am done with the Insulate everything is nice and covered. I did run out of it for those two corners over there But I just put some of that bitumen thermal shield that I used to cover the engine. So now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cover everything with the um, Foil bubble wrap it did come with some double-sided tape, but I also have some aluminum tape you want to use some kind of heat resistant tape um, anytime that you attach anything to the roof it has to be attached with heat resistant either glue or silicon or tape because that is the part of the um, body of the car that gets the hottest when the sun hits it the roof is nice and covered in bubble foil wrap and now the only thing that's uh, left to do for insulation is to fill in all the gaps in the doors on the sides and on the back and uh, for that I'm gonna use the foam boards that I've got left I've got lots of those and then I will use some bubble wrap but I'm not gonna attach it directly to the metal I'm actually gonna attach it to the wood panels that are gonna go on those spots The insulation is done and it's looking good. Um, the next step is going to be to add the flooring in and the cladding onto the roof and on the walls. So stay tuned for that. I'm actually going to start working on that right now. I am going to include the material list on the description bar if you want to check um, the products that I used. I will say that many of them I did have to buy from Amazon, which is not something that I enjoy doing, but they were just not available anywhere else. So I will include those links in the description bar, but there's an exception and um, I'm not affiliated with uh, Amazon, so I don't make any money out of you checking those products. Uh, but yeah, it's just, I couldn't find them anywhere else. Anyhow, I hope that this was helpful and I shall see you next time.